In today's video, I want to discuss what you can do to make your campaign into a living, breathing world. Imagine your players getting tangled up with the politics of powerful guilds, ancient orders, and secret societies. It's all about adding depth, intrigue, and endless possibilities to your stories. Stick around whilst we discuss a straightforward system for creating and tracking factions and how you can use them to breathe new life into your worlds. Don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel if you want to see more content like this. Up until recently, I've been at a bit of a creative loss with how I want my campaigns to be. A recent video of mine was called Why I Ended My Campaign. And it goes into detail, but the TLDR version is that I wasn't really running the game that I wanted to play. But I think now, a month or so later, I've started to formulate some ideas of a new direction that I want to move in with my campaigns moving forward. And the main thing is two words, dynamic factions. When creating your campaign, I personally think one of the most important things you can do is create your factions. These factions are the main groups of creatures in your world that have influence and control over your regions. These can be feudal counties, duchies and kingdoms. They can be tribes of orcs, goblins, cultists, bandits, all sorts of things. And I'd say that start off with three to five factions is great and you can add more as time goes on. Having factions in your world that can you know, continue to evolve and change through play is, in my opinion, what Sandbox should be all about. You're able to come up with so many creative ideas from having to find factions in your world that are actually present and these ideas can formulate and develop into lots of different adventures and stories based on how your players are interacting with them. The big thing is that it creates a progressional story, right? And that's what we really want. It's not a story that's linear. It's one that's very dynamic that can go in lots of different directions, but it's a progressional story that the players are building alongside you due to the actions and decisions that they make. And I think defining these factions outright and coming up with a few motives for each of them will lay down the foundation for building a campaign that feels alive. Here are three factions that I'm making as examples for this video. The first is the County of Blackstone. It has a faction strength score of six. Don't worry, we'll get to a faction strength scores later. The leader is Lord Henry, the second cousin to the king, whoever the king is. <laughs> Their motives are three things, honor, pride, and realm stability. Second faction is the Bone Crusher Orcs. You know, give them, give them a normal orcish name. Bone Crusher Orcs. Their faction strength score is four, and they are led by Dregu the Impaler, who's a half ogre, very big orc. And their motives are enslavement, hatred for their enemy, obviously, and power, which I think would make a lot of sense for orcs. Obviously, it's a bit boring, but the bit's atypical, but uh, it works, right? The third faction is the Crimson Brotherhood. Their faction strength score is three, and their leader is Edwin Cliff. <laughs> Not Edwin Van Cleef, leave me alone, guys. The former guildmaster of the Masons that were in the county of Blackstone. Their motives are revenge, envy, and debt owed. So the faction strength score is a big part of this. And obviously I said I'd talk about it. So I will, I will tell you guys now it ranges from one to 10. This is used to determine how powerful a faction is and how influential they are in their local region. This will be used later on in the video. We'll talk about it a bit more, but its main purpose is to understand the power dynamic in your world and what events could occur that involve these different factions. If the bone crushes have a faction strength score of seven or eight and that puts them ahead of the county 
I'd argue that they would be feeling more confident and they might even directly oppose the county and maybe even try and attack the keep or whatever main military stronghold that they have, a castle or a outpost or whatever. But you know, we now have enough information based off what I kind of put on the screen to create an objective for each faction. You can have multiple objectives, but for now, we're just going to have one. So if you have lots of other ideas for your factions, what I would do is I would just write down a list of bullet pointed ideas and just, you know, I don't know, save them for later. That makes sense, right? Faction one, which is the county. Their primary objective currently is going to be to recruit and train more soldiers to protect the nearby trade roads from the other factions, primarily the Orcs. This takes time, energy, and money in order to complete. And to track their progress, we're going to need to determine how difficult this is going to be an objective. And I think difficulty is based on just the challenge, the, how complicated it is, but also how long it takes, right? And I think considering the length of time it usually takes to train a man from being you know a commoner a peasant to an actual soldier we're gonna put it in like medium difficulty so it's not hard it's not easy easy it's somewhere in the middle so the prime objective recruit and train soldiers is going to be out of 10 points okay they're going to be starting off with one but the objective target number is 10 okay and once they reach 10 they will complete their objective and they will gain more soldiers all objectives at least in my systems start off with one point you can start off at zero if you're playing a ttrpg where zero is used more for like dcs as the starting number but because like there is no zero on a d20 dice i don't think there really should be a zero in any of these systems if that makes sense so just start them off with one point and, and have it go up to a certain certain you know certain target number right the idea is when a week passes in the game world in the campaign world you're going to roll an objective check which is a d6 all right on a one two or a three nothing happens but if you roll a four five or a six the faction gains one point incrementally towards achieving their goal once they reach the objective target number, their objective is complete and they gain one point of faction strength, which in this case will raise the county of Blackstone from six to seven. This wouldn't be a dynamic sandbox if the players couldn't affect the factions or involve themselves in their objectives. The players could spend a few weeks helping the Lord train the soldiers, which may grant advantage on the objective checks for those specific weeks, that period of time. I think being able to interfere with the objective of the orcs or the bandits could lead to me making roles with disadvantage or just an outright uh, failure in order to complete that objective, depending on, you know, kind of what happens. And, you know, you might be thinking, well, can the factions actually affect each other's faction score and I think yeah they probably could I, I don't see why they couldn't you could create objectives that directly oppose another faction perhaps by completing their goal they gain a point of faction strength maybe they remove one from the enemy or maybe they gain one and the enemy loses one now that really does raise the stakes doesn't it my example will be with the bandits okay because we haven't really discussed them yet who are led by uh, Edwin Cliff, the former mason of Blackstone who wasn't paid when his and his group had repaired the, uh, the keep a couple of years ago. He's now disenfranchised. He and his followers have turned to a life of crime to regain the sum that is owed to them. Edwin has decided, rather than to use force, to weaken the county through bribing a key official, perhaps the captain of the guard or an influential lord. I think captain of the guard sounds good. Success in his scheme will allow him to undermine the county, gain vital information that he should not be privy to, 
and also maybe even free some of the uh, people from the county jail which he could gain as allies. This does not just grant his faction some form of advantage and strength, but it does actually diminish the strength of the county, even if the county doesn't realize it yet. Now, how do we represent and seed these objectives into play, right? Because we don't just want to allow these objectives to pass without any potential involvement from the party. I think it's up to you to pick and choose the duration that you want to represent these objectives and the events that follow. If the players visit the captain of the guard, maybe they'll see like a big pouch of gold and a, and a letter on the side table as they're kind of talking to the captain. It's unlikely that they'll think much of it. And if they ask the captain about it, he'll just say, oh yeah, it's money from one of the lords for a, a bounty that's coming up soon. You know, he'll just kind of like shrug it off. Maybe a player will try and inside him. Maybe they'll find out he's lying. But he's not going to be honest about it. Despite any push from the players, you know. With the previous example, maybe the soldiers, you know, the one with the training the men. The soldiers may start to show improvement over the weeks through, like, public displays. Maybe people can go and watch the soldiers train. Maybe they'll grow bold in taverns and start picking fights with the adventurers or with other locals because now they're soldiers and they're not just uh, lowly commoners anymore. Who knows, right? Seeding these plot points into play isn't very difficult, and I don't really think you need to pre-plan it. You can really just improvise most of this. You know, I think as long as you've got the factions kind of on your dm screen somewhere and you're tracking their progress i think you'll likely remember to kind of seed in these different factions whenever it's appropriate through roleplay and narration i also think it's okay for enemy factions to actually complete their objectives without too much seeding if you really want to i think it's up to the players to be proactive especially in a sandbox game in order to challenge these factions and sometimes the factions will progress regardless of play, regardless of really what the players do. And I think that's okay. And I think that should be in, not necessarily encouraged, but I think that's definitely a part of life. After all, not every event in your world is going to be player driven and they don't need to influence anything and everything. Some things are just going to be above their pay grade and sometimes their involvement could do more damage than good, you know? The idea of low-level adventurers being able to change the outcome of a war seems silly to me. They might be able to gain some increments and destroy, yeah, ruin some of the objectives, but I think there should still be a chance that the orcs could win. You know, the collapse of the county to these same orcs may seem foul and unreasonable, maybe even unfun to you. But just consider the interesting adventures that could follow afterwards and the power vacuum that could present itself to adventurers who are smart and lucky. Maybe the county needs a new count. Maybe one of the players could fill that role. Anyway, I want to hear from you guys. Unless you've been living under a rock, you will probably know that I'm running a Shadow Dark campaign on most Sundays these days. Sometimes I do a one shot, but usually it's the campaign and I've been live streaming it on the channel and I want to hear from you guys and, uh, on perhaps your ideas for this game. I want you guys to create a green skin faction for me. Anything from goblins, hobgoblins, orcs, bugbears, maybe even ogres or trolls. Come up with a faction, a leader three motives and a handful of objectives their primary rival is the keep of sunstone which is located on the biggest river in the region i will use one of these ideas as a faction in my current game and i'll have them take on the player characters other than that make sure you guys join my public discord and get involved in our discussions as well as community events that we typically run weekly sometimes i run one shots if you'd like to join one that's how you can also consider checking out my patreon where a write-up for this system will be located as well as a couple of nice little easter eggs and stuff that you can kind of play around with in your own games you can actually sign up to patreon for free i didn't 
know that up until recently, uh, but, but this is actually on there for free. So if you sign up, you'll be able to gain access to this, uh, this write-up. Um, a lot of my other content is behind one of the paid tiers though, so feel free to check it out. Thank you for watching the video. I'll see you guys next time on Loki's Lair. <laughs> Until then.